They say that the first sip is always the best. And it is. From the cool, frothy fizz to the piney aroma of hops, good craft beer always finds a way to tingle with the edges of one's mind. But let's rewind a bit. Beer is one of the oldest beverages known to man, dating back as far as the written history of ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. At its simplest, beer is made of only four ingredients, yeast, malt, water, and hops. As luck would have it, many moons ago, those ingredients combined and spontaneously fermented due to wild yeasts in the air, which literally turned that soupy goop into liquid gold. Or what we, the more modern man, or woman, call beer. It's no wonder that craft brewing has become one of the fastest growing industries of North County, San Diego. North County is home to nearly 40 breweries and brew pubs, earning Highway 78 the nickname Hops Highway. The growth of craft beer, also known as microbrewed beer, suggests that there's a new wave of beer brewers who are changing the average beer drinker's idea on what beer should or could be. Mass-produced beer makers are finding it more and more difficult to compete with rapidly growing craft breweries and brew pubs. These smaller microbreweries focus on developing unique flavors and styles that reflect an individual brewer's personal taste, but also the taste of a region. Stone Brewing Company is a giant in the San Diego craft beer industry. Stone paved the way for many breweries and helped open up new categories that never existed before. They've also grown at a rapid pace. In 2014, Stone was the ninth largest craft brewery in the United States. With a following of beer lovers that border the fanatical, one could call them the rock stars of craft beer in San Diego. What is it that you want to hear come out of their mouth after that first sip? Wow. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Something besides this sucks, <laughs> you know? It's, it's been proven that I think a lot of people want to, they want to enjoy artisanal things, things that are very real to them. They don't so much want to keep flocking to the Starbucks and the Walmarts and the Home Depots of the world. And I think when you can have something like the craft beer culture that is very small business minded, small business entrepreneur minded, and people want to see those things succeed, they really do. The numbers that support craft beer are astounding. There are over 40 breweries in the North County area. The North County craft beer industry also supports over 1,700 jobs. In craft beer, we are made up of many companies of various sizes, so we're very diverse. Because of that, we actually have a large strength. Economically speaking, we now represent over $600 million of impact just here locally in San Diego County alone. That is extremely large. In fact, it's even larger than Comic-Con is now. Craft beer is good for any place, not just Oceanside and as a business and a culture, I think anywhere. Now our two biggest projects are our facility that we're uh, building in Richmond, Virginia okay. and Berlin, Germany. Uh, the area we're moving into in Richmond, Virginia, extremely depressed, oh. extremely, extremely in need of some help. In the 2010 census was still the most segregated city in America. And so we're excited to go into a community that doesn't really know a lot about craft beer, doesn't know a lot about stone. They know we're going to bring hundreds of jobs and millions right. of dollars and all these tourists, but they don't know about our community. And it's been awesome sharing that with, with delegates from, from the city and from the Chamber of Commerce and the City Council. Mm -hmm. And I think craft beer gives people an identity to support. They, they certainly seem to be very, very supportive and appreciative of, of craft breweries. And I think one of the things is people have become more educated about beer in North County and in Oceanside, I think they're seeking out other beers. And, and now with, when other places open, they're gonna be like, I wanna go check that place out. And they might find their new, their, their new favorite beer. There was, an, there was an article written in Newsweek Magazine last year, and, the, and the, the title was, Can Craft Beer Save America? Wow. And it talked about these exact things. You know, Could craft beer save America? Because you have these downtrodden and, and really depressed areas of the country but people want that artisanal thing. It could be somebody making candles 
or making bread, but somebody that's doing it and being successful, and I think that gives us boost to the to the to the economy. It gives a boost to people's morale. They want to do things. They want to go out. It, it lends to more conversation, and I think that I think craft beer is going to give uh, that to Oceanside, to North County, and and help it prosper. Besides a notable economic impact. Craft beer also has a major cultural impact, such as changing conceptions of stereotypical beer lovers. To learn more specifically about Oceanside's and the 78 Corridor, I spoke with a few true Oceanside locals. Jamie Stone, editor and publisher of the Oceanside Magazine, Missy Powers, producer and host of local surf and food web series, Waves and Craves, and Josh Hoover, a local home brewer and beer connoisseur. How would you define a craft beer lover? I think forever the image of the beer drinker was the guy on his porch with the big beer belly and his, and his ice bucket full of Budweiser's or Coors Light or whatever, and it's just like, oh, my husband's out there drinking beer. I think now it's almost like there's this kind of hipster slash beer snob movement where it's like, you know, you, you go to the bar now and your buddy that you just played football or golf with that you think is the toughest guy in the world is like, no, 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 no. You don't want that one. You want the full hop IPA, blah, blah, blah. And now it's, there's talking points to beer now because of the craft beer revolution and it's a little more sophisticated. And that's, you know, from my businesses and restaurants and just being around and seeing it, it seems like there's a pride now in what kind of beer you're drinking more so than just totally. the label or the brand. Snob kind of rubs me the wrong way. You know, I have a preference for what I want to drink and spend my money on. And for my money, you know, the craft beer movement, that craft beer that, you know, is being produced is, that's where my money's going, so. And I, you know, I use the word snob sparingly. I think it's just making the point that people care about what they're drinking now. And, you know, it's like, I'm a, I'm a wave snob. I don't want to surf when it's one foot. I want four to five foot waves. So I take it, you know, it's not a, I wouldn't take it as an attack. It'd be more like, hey, they know what they want and you better give it to them or they're going to let you know about it. On the other end of the craft beer spectrum are Oceanside-based microbrewers Legacy Brewing Company, a very true-to-Oceanside locals bar. Legacy is a microbrewery and tap room that proudly maintains an attitude of no frills, just fun, and, of course, award-winning beer. Legacy's master brewer Mark Miracle brings with him the memories of traveling across Europe and the impact of German culture to his brew. And with 12 beers rotating on tap and six of them as medal winners, Legacy doesn't stop there. Beer and bingo. <laughs> Tell me more about this fabulous <laughs> night that I want to well. come and participate in. Do you, is that your bingo? Is that your thing? You love bingo? Uh, I don't like bingo or dislike bingo. It just, um, we do something pretty much different every day of the week. It's not just bingo. That's what German beer halls are all about, getting people together because it's meant to be open and fun and not, you know, like sitting in a little booth in the dark. <laughs> right. Just as a chef plans a menu in accordance with the freshest ingredients of the season, a master brewer will do the exact same when deciding what type of beer to create next. I, I used to do some work in the, the food industry and uh, a friend of mine uh, brings in products from all over the world. And he said, you think you could do anything with uh, guava? The funny thing about the whole thing, when he told me we were going to do a guava beer, I said, there is no freaking way we're doing a guava beer. <laughs> and now I'm eating my own yeah. words because it is one of our best sellers and it's awesome. And I'm drinking it right now. So it's, it's a really, really good. The craft beer industry now parallels the wine industry with the epicurean enjoyment of pairing food and drink. There's a whole spectrum of light to dark, bitter to sour, ales to lagers, fruity to smoky, and the list does go on. Beer, unlike other beverages, can be adjusted. You add adjuncts to it, you can change the flavor of it. There's categorical styles that go back literally thousands of years, beer being the second oldest beverage known in the world, um, yet at the same time, it's still a growing, evolving thing where it involves uh, fruit and various types of grains and any assortment of things, coffee, chocolate. There's, uh, there's no limit, really, to what you can do with beer. Fish tacos with a lighter beer is insane. It's so delicious, definitely into pairings, for sure. I think that there's, you know, if you're eating something lighter, sometimes for me, a heavier beer like an IPA is a little bit better because you get that kind of juxtaposed. Say you're eating, you know, seafood, I like a richer beer because it kind of, you get that light taste and you get that heavy taste. So I like the opposites when I, but I, I mean, there's no, I don't think there's really any rules to it. I think it's just up to your, your taste buds, right? Yeah. yeah. But despite the variety of beers, there will always be the naysayers. 
And many breweries like Legacy look forward to the challenge. When someone is a Miller Lite, a Bud Light, or a drinker of that type of beer, how do you entice them to come and try something that you make? And beer's kind of like wine in that respect. You always start off with the Ziffendales and the sweet stuff, and then you end up in the Merlots and the Cabs. It's the same thing with beer. And it, it, it's, we're in this little change right now in this country where the, the flavor profiles are changing in people's taste buds. And so that's a great thing because we have all these beer drinkers out there right now that have never tried craft beer. It's very true. Very I take, we take it as a challenge when somebody comes in and says, oh, I, I don't drink beer, I only drink this. Yeah, I guarantee you we'll find a style you'll like. Absolutely. One of the newly developed breweries in Oceanside, Bagby Beer Company, was one of the most anticipated brew pubs to open up on Coast Highway. Bagby Beer Company could be seen as what's to come for the growing brewery scene in North County. A multi-level, multi-experiential restaurant and brewery that has a very organic and Californian feel to it. Husband and wife, Jeff and Dandy Bagby, are co-owners of Bagby Beer Company. I would like to hear your story of how you two met. Was it over drinking a beer? Did you meet in a bar? Did you, like, how did how did you two come about? First and foremost, I'd like to know. I always Got tell that. the story. You want to tell the story? Well, yeah, we just met through an old roommate of mine, um, literally at my house um, one night, and we just had people over and barbecue, and she came over, and we just hit it off and. <laughs> and it went from there, I don't know. <laughs> it also did, it actually didn't involve beer at that okay, point. Okay. It involved a uh, margarita, which is subsequently fast forward 10 years, and that's the margarita that's on our menu today. Oh, really? So it was his recipe way back when that I was kind of lukewarm on margaritas at that point, and uh, he made this like perfect, handmade, fresh, delicious, everything, margarita, and I, that was it. I'm like, what is, what am I drinking right now? I've never had anything like this. And so that was actually, first sort of introduction to who Jeff is actually as a person is just quality details do it right if you're in the know on the local brewery scene you'd quickly recall Jeff's long and prestigious history in craft brewing before opening up Bagby Beer Company Jeff had worked for another craft brew pioneer based in Carlsbad California Pizza Port during his time there as a master brewer Jeff contributed to Pizza Port's plethora of medals and awards and despite all of the accolades and the following of hopheads, Jeff maintains an attitude of earthy humbleness. What has craft beer taught the both of you about life? You don't have enough time for me to answer <laughs> oh. that question. <laughs> I don't know. I, for me, I think it's it's just sort of a symbol of of taking the time to do it right, right. Um, to have uh, have an understanding also of history. So for us, um, and for me personally, knowing where the, that beer or beer style originated, um, and we, you know, in our former life before us, we spent some time traveling and we've spent, been to Europe a few times and have um, gone to some, you know, breweries that are hundreds and hundreds of year, years old, kind of the Trappist breweries there and, um, and many others, and it started way before us and way before craft beer was anything. Absolutely. And so, I don't know, I like to remember that, the history and the foundation, and then therefore to treat what we're doing today, at least in part, as a respect for, for what came ahead of us. Reading about like Sourcely for Hops, it was like a kind of a part of this, this whole like, yeah. making beer that like... It gives us some context. I, I didn't even think about yeah. that, you know? I think a lot of consumers don't. I think we are so focused on what's in the glass. Right. You know, this is just what I'm focused on. But I think part going back to brewing that day, time with Jeff, I mean, it just added so much more depth to the experience because when you realize everything that goes into it, whether it is the historical context we're talking about or just the hard work it takes to get here, right. or when you're in Yakima, Washington, and you're on a hop farm and you're talking to the hop farmer that's been there for 150 years doing this, you know, it adds so much more richness to the end product that, um, that you just can't get if you're blind to it. When Jeff left Pizza Port in 2012 to develop Bagby Beer Company, Many fans thought he'd make the same types of beer in his newfound neighborhood. Instead, the Bagbys decided to do something different. When we opened on purpose, I didn't make an IPA. I didn't want that to be the main focus when we opened. I didn't want that to be why people came here and, and to only be making IPA from the start. I wanted people to come in and realize that we have other styles to offer, that there's other things out there, that they could learn something by trying all these other different beers. Right. And, 
yeah, we got complaints. We had people walk in and go, oh, you don't have an IPA on? I'm out of here and walk right out the door. Um, I don't really understand that. To me, that's not, obviously it's not what our goal is here. Our goal is to entertain the beer drinker and the beer drinker drinks all styles of beer and wants to learn more and try more. That's why we have guest beer. You know, if we don't, if I feel like we have a hole in the kind of style rainbow, we'll use, um, you know, some, another brewer that's a friend of ours or another brewer that we feel makes a beer of high quality and put that in that slot. You know, our, our number one goal is to make this place a destination for people to come to where they're so excited and so jazzed that they tell their friends and their family and they bring their friends and family here. And that's what's been happening. New businesses often run into several key issues when starting up. The main concern being that of getting through the city. However, the city of Oceanside is open to working with new business owners and is making it easier for businesses to keep moving forward. The city is wonderful to work with. Uh, there's a, you don't find that with a lot of coastal cities. Top to bottom, I think everybody has been really good with us. Keeping communication open and getting through anything we needed to get through. We work with the Small Business Development Center. Uh, if they're a brand new startup, they can help them with their business plan. They can help them find capital. We've done workshops to help know what the process will be because often you know your business. You know how to brew beer, you know how to make your food, but you don't know all this gobbledygook that goes into having to open a building. Breweries seem to be having a domino effect wherever they go. Stone's Beer Garden in Oceanside seems to have brought a flood of other businesses around it, causing the foot traffic and business in the area to grow. And, and working with the breweries, especially the ones in the downtown and the coastal area, they want to be right near the beach. It gives it that different kind of feel that they want. They're seeking us out even more than um, we're seeking them out. Coast Highway is filling up. It is the most sought after for foodie uh, restaurants, I think in all of San Diego County. It's been a, a long time coming and we're coming into our own in the last two years and it's a great feeling. Aside from how great craft beer is to drink and, and get tipsy on, the power of what it's doing for the city cannot be underestimated. I mean, you take the fact that, that Jeff here was this master brewer with all these great awards. He could have done this in Solana Beach. He could have done this in Laguna. He could have went out to Tama He could have done this anywhere. And he chose Oceanside to do this. And the fact that that's happening and people are choosing Oceanside for that, and it's becoming a destination for beer, is amazing to me. Oceanside is known for its tumultuous past. And unfortunately, the reputation still lurks in the surrounding city's minds. When I was younger, my parents wouldn't let me go to the beach by myself, and I was like 15. I mean, it's just there was fights downtown all the time, but it's completely changed. It's a safe place now. I mean, there's not, you know, fights all over, and, and people want to come here. You know, like I said, I work in Solana Beach, and people ask me all the time about the brew walk here in Oceanside. The increase of police officers and community outreach in Oceanside's rougher neighborhoods have helped drastically decrease crime in the city. In 2007, the Oceanside Police recorded its lowest crime levels in more than 30 years. Oceanside is not what it used to be. And in true Osider form and fashion, the people couldn't be prouder. It was a rough town. It was a military town and there wasn't a lot of variety and it, it was very clicky, but those people Instead of leaving like so many people do, I want to get away from my life here, they've stayed and they've helped build it together. I mean, I consider Oceanside the last bastion of Southern California in the terms that we have a beautiful harbor, we've got the longest pier in Southern California, we have a mission, we've got beautiful white sand beaches. I mean, who wouldn't want to live here? This is the California dream, really, for me. What do you see in the future here for Oceanside? I see 78 degrees and sunny <laughs> consistently. I would hope it would continue on the path that it's going right now. I hope that the, that the community sees the value in these, in these small businesses that can really make a difference. I think it's an amazing time in a history of craft beer and the fact that San Diego literally leads the way. You can find no place like it in the United States and even beyond. When I was young, if you wanted to go out, you had to go to PD or go downtown. Totally. That's not the case anymore because there's places in North County that are amazing. I see Oceanside growing up. I think the most amazing thing for me through my personal experiences with the restaurant and the magazine is finally, finally seeing people from Rancho Santa Fe, Del Mar, La Jolla, 
Laguna. I've had people from all these places come to, come to the privateer at some point and say, we came all the way because we read your reviews on Yelp, or we came here and we were on the craft brew tour, and Oceanside's becoming a destination. I've noticed too, it's just become more of a family-friendly place, and that is awesome, because you didn't really see that when we were growing up so much, you know? So families on the beach, family going out to dinner. It's gonna be a lot of, you know, the locals that have been here for generations and upon generations, and then, you know, transplant plants who quickly become locals, the growth of the craft beer industry is one that parallels and aids the economic growth of the city of Oceanside. For a town that has had a questionable reputation for years, the craft beer industry is continuously making waves to change the perception of this underrated surf and military town. And the prideful locals of Oceanside, well, they welcome it with open arms. And from what I've seen, the growth is much wanted and needed. The places to celebrate and enjoy those moments are growing with the city of Oceanside. To that, cheers. Cheers. Cheers, cheers to Bagby. Thank you, Bagby.